Netflix's Stranger Things has captivated audiences with a satisfying throwback to classic 80s paranormal thrillers. But how did this modern classic actually happen? Here's a look at the untold truth of Stranger Things. Super Duffer Brothers Twins Matt and Ross Duffer, the writer-director duo who created the show, showed an early interest in filmmaking, experimenting with home movies as early as third grade. They pursued their passion by studying film at Chapman University. The first movie was Hidden, a horror film which didn't receive wide release, but it did catch the eye of M. Night Shyamalan, who hired them to work on his series Wayward Pines. That experience gave the Duffers the start they needed to pitch their own series, with the help of producers Dan Cohen and Sean Levy. Netflix eventually bought the show, but only after it was rejected by at least 15 other networks. Strong Island Stranger Things takes place in Hawkins, Indiana, but the Duffers originally wanted to play with the concept of a waterside setting, specifically Montauk, New York. The region's real-life history may have inspired this story. Legend has it the town's Camp Hero Air Force Base was a lot like MK Ultra in very disturbing ways, including serving as the site of rumored government experiments with mind control on kidnapped children. Georgia On My Mind Stranger Things was filmed in the Atlanta, Georgia area, which is also home to a number of television and film productions, so there was just bound to be a location crossover or two. The Bellwood Quarry, where Fake Will's body is found and Mike is bullied into cliff diving, was the same sight seen in The Walking Dead's first season and The Hunger Games movies. Your next Hollywood-inspired trip destination has just been booked font of wisdom. Most of Stranger Things pop culture references were put in on purpose, and the title art font is no exception. It's an altered version of Benguiat, which was used on a slew of classic Stephen King book covers, including, but not limited to, Cujo, Salem's Lot, Firestarter, Pet Cemetery, Misery, and The Stand. The typeface, which was designed by Ed Benguiat, was also popularized in 1978 and also has been seen in the openings for films like Star Trek Generations and Star Trek First Contact. 80s Cinema School Finding the right child star for Stranger Things was important, because even though there are cast members with higher billing, the show's heart revolves around the kids. The Duffers auditioned 906 boys and 307 girls for the roles using scenes from Stand By Me. When they finally settled on the cast, they were sent home with instructions to watch films like Poltergeist and The Goonies to get a sense of the look and feel of the show to come clearly it paid off. On the first day of filming, they shot the first Dungeons & Dragons session that starts the series. The Duffers told Entertainment Weekly, Our boys flew through the scene effortlessly and energetically, and the chemistry was electric. They felt like they'd known each other their whole lives. Other than when we sold the show to Netflix, this was the single biggest moment for Stranger Things. Buzz cut, baby. Millie Bobby Brown, who turned in stunning work as the super-powered Eleven, didn't know she'd have to shear off her locks until she'd already won the role. She eventually came around to the idea after being shown an image of Charlize Theron's buzz cut in Mad Max Fury Road. She was also encouraged by an old pic of co-star Winona Ryder, who sported a pixie cut in her younger days. Sort of a choice. And I showed you my school pic. And I showed, and Winona <laughs> showed me. So I thought, like... You know, Winona looked cool in back in the day with, you know, the pixie cut, and I thought maybe I could bring it back. Channeling Meryl Streep. Winona Ryder, a legend of the 80s herself, thanks to Heathers and Beetlejuice, was one of the first casting picks for Stranger Things. But when she was approached about the show, she had no idea what streaming was and little TV experience. For her character's look, though, she found inspiration in Meryl Streep's performance in Silkwood, which was released the same year as the show's events. Her hair in the show was something of a tribute to the Oscar-winning star. Stephen King is a fan. As one of the biggest inspirations for Stranger Things, author Stephen King's praise of the show is worth a lot. The author wrote on Twitter that when he watched the show, it was like watching Steve King's greatest hits in a good way. 
and graded the program an A for pure fun. Interestingly enough, Finn Wolfhard, who plays Mike Wheeler in the show, will star in another big Stephen King-inspired property, the upcoming big screen adaptation of It, which, full circle, the Duffers tried in vain to direct years ago. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know what you want to see in Stranger Things Season 2.